You're watching MTBS TV. I'm Neil Schneider. Joining me is Steve Venuti, president of HDMI Licensing. Welcome to the program, Steve. Thank you, Neil. Good to see you again. Now, each year we, we interview you, and there's always, always a big announcement, but before we go into any, any big announcements, maybe you could tell our, our viewers a little bit about HDMI, what, what you guys do. Well, we are the licensing agent for the HDMI specification, which means we run the HDMI business, and uh, that is the interface that connects HD components, and so if you want to build a product that has HDMI, then you have to come to us, license it, and then you can build your products, and we test them, and do all sorts of things to make sure that when you plug them in, they all work. So when we're talking about HDMI, we're talking about the connectors, uh, I take it, between the television and the, the source of the content, like a, a Blu-ray player or a console, like a PlayStation, am I correct? So that's correct, and the connector just hides the real guts of the uh, interface, which is inside the Blu-ray player or the TV, but uh, the connector and the cable are critical for getting from one place to another with your HD content. Now, what type of things are important in a connector? I mean, it, it seems like such a simple thing to have a connector. Why, why is HDMI so important to the industry? Well, uh, the connector is such, is such a simple thing, and it should be a simple thing, actually. You just want to connect this thing and it should work. But in order to get uncompressed, uh, audio and video, high definition, especially as we raise the kind of bar in terms of the resolution of the applications and the content, then the difficulty becomes very complex in how that data gets from one place to another and is then uh, displayed on a screen. So that's what we do. We try to make it easy. Connector seems easy. What really goes into it becomes very complex. Okay, now let's fast forward a bit uh, to last, last year or two, and I would say that HDMI has been very critical, especially when it came to console 3D gaming. Maybe you could elaborate a bit as to what HDMI's role when it comes to 3D. Uh, well, actually, HDMI with the launch of 1.4 specification, which was several years ago, uh, really defined a standard way of, of creating the 3D formats to send from a Blu-ray player, for example, or a game console to your display. So without that standard way of doing it, we saw a lot of proprietary ways, but there was no way that 3D could really take off. So what HDMI did was say, all right, if you want to send that HD data and that in 3D, then this is the way you're going to have to package it so that everybody under can send it and understand it. Now this is actually, that's been a really good thing because in, in the PC gaming space we see HDMI connectors on, on NVIDIA cards, we're starting to see them of course on uh, AMD cards as well. Console, of course Sony PlayStation was first to bat with HDMI 1.4 even through their own Blu-ray player, but I, I gather we've seen that on Xbox as well, am I correct? It's on Xbox as well, that's correct. Excellent. Now, now let's go fast forward a little bit to the to, to the new announcements. Now, I understand one of the big challenges with HDMI, and, and we talked about this last year at last year's CES Unveiled, is that for console gaming, 720p is appropriate because that's pretty much the limit of, of PlayStation console for, for high performance. But for, for PC gamers, it's very challenging because uh, they don't want to game at 720p. They want to game at 1080p or more. Uh, it, it, are, it, has there been a change in this since? Well, when we launched 1.4, we had, uh, actually when we launched 1.3, we had a bandwidth capability of 10 gigabits per second, which, if we talk about 3D gaming, can give you 1080p, 60 frames per second, left, right eye. So that's, that's, we still don't see content for that, but we already see that. But one thing we do know is that the gaming industry especially, if we can create more bandwidth, they'll use it. They're going to give us, and the PC industry generally, they'll give us higher resolution, faster frame rates, 3D. They're going to be able to do that in that industry faster than you see it in the, uh, let's say, the disc industry or the Hollywood movies. So they're going to push us to do things faster and faster. Now, uh, I understand there's a, there's a new initiative taking place within HDMI licensing called the HDMI Forum. Can you fill us in a little bit on, on what that's about? Actually, very important news. Last October, which is only a little more than two months ago, the HDMI founders, which are seven companies that really developed this, this technology, decided it's so big and that we want to take it to the next level that we opened up the ability for other companies to come and join and provide their competency and their expertise to help develop the specification. So any future versions of the specification will not be the result of seven companies, but right now we have 43 companies in this HDMI forum, so we're going to get broader participation. And what that also means is it's going to move to other areas that HDMI has not been core in, and uh, for example, mobile products, uh, or even PC products, where it was really designed to be a consumer electronics 
home theater product. Now the PC guys are heavily involved in the forum, the mobile people are, so I think we'll see HDMI uh, become a broader kind of uh, specification appealing to broader industries. I know you can't mention all 43 companies, but can you elaborate on some of the, the, the name brands that, that our, our re viewers might be aware of? Uh, no, I can't. Tell you what, go to hdmiforum.org, look at the member page, and then you can see. But let me tell you this, any big company in the PC, in the consumer electronics, and in mobile worlds, they're, they're represented there. Is AMD a member? Yes, AMD is a member. Is NVIDIA a member? Yes, NVIDIA is a member. So it sounds pretty exciting. You've got two of the biggest graphics card manufacturers right there. Yeah, so we have, that's the best thing about this HDMI forum is it broadens the participation. So the HDMI specification, I think you will see in the future, will have a broader set of use cases and applications that it will appeal to. Okay, excellent. Now, uh, it, it, it's public knowledge, AMD, they've got a, a new, uh, how should I put it, a new category of graphics card or a new generation of graphics card called the 7000 series. And according to their new spec, it will support 1080p 3D gaming, 60 frames per second, which as far as I know is, is a first. Are you anticipating other products being released in this vein? Yeah, without giving specific names, um there are going to be several silicon vendors that are going to announce essentially 300 megahertz products, which is the bandwidth to, that supports 1080p 60 left right eye, uh, that, 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 that level of video timing and resolution. So, you know, we, th th this is going to get to the ceiling of what HDMI can do in terms of a specification, but finally the silicon, the spec always is at an advance of the silicon. Finally the silicon is getting to the point where it's tapping out what the specification says it can provide in terms of bandwidth. And uh, so, so AMD is the first. Now what I understand when it comes to HDMI connectivity is it's great if the graphics card or the console can support it, but it's equally necessary for the display manufacturer to support it. So if I had, let's say, an AMD 7000 series graphics card, I could connect it to you know, my current 3D HDTV, but I gather it's unlikely that it will work at the, the higher range. Do you anticipate announcements this year at CES of upcoming brands that will support this upgraded specification? I mean, this is always a chicken and egg scenario of consumer electronics where the content and the display, you know, and, 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 and which is going to come first. Um, if there is an application that uh, a source device can, can, can send that people really want, which takes, let's say, 10 gigabits per second, which is what you're talking about, essentially, the display manufacturers fall into place. You know, they'll, they'll definitely put, build it in their TVs. And one thing I know about the display manufacturers, and actually the whole industry is, bandwidth is, is king. We're always going to see higher and higher bandwidth being accepted and sent. Uh, and so I think you'll see at the CES, uh, you'll start to see companies announce that they can accept and send that, 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 that amount of bandwidth out of their, their source or their, their TV. Now, are we also seeing a transition here? Uh, I mean, in, I could only, like, in PC gaming, what I found is that HDMI ten, tended to be very strong in the televisions, but the displays, like the desktop displays, were very strong with alternatives, like DisplayPort or for dual link DVI. Are we starting to see a transition where HDMI is going to be covering both the living room space as well as the desktop space? Yeah, I think, you know, if we talk about DisplayPort specifically, DisplayPort kind of has a niche, and you're, you're right. If you're going to attach your PC to your, to your display, um, there, are some, there are some reasons why DisplayPort does a good job. I would never say they don't. Um, but I think HDMI is the, the 800 pound gorilla, and if you ever want to connect to any TV, uh, then you're going to have to deal with HDMI. Now, HDMI, because the forum is now here, and because we have people at the forum who are members of the forum who are PC-centric, I think what you'll see about HDMI is that it'll start to expand to be able to meet the needs of the PC market directly. Whereas before it was, it was okay, it did a good job, but now I think you'll see it uh, specifically meet those needs. So we'll see if, if HDMI is, is in more monitors or not. I don't, you know, we'll, time will tell. Now, you mentioned something that I thought was very interesting, which is the mobile markets. Now, I myself, I mean, I have a smartphone that I could connect to my, my 3D television and see, you know, watch 3D movies straight from my smartphone. What type of innovations can we look forward to in the mobile space from HDMI? 
Well, the first thing we did was launch a D connector, which is a very, very, very small connector. So that's number one. Uh, obviously, we all know these, the smaller the products get, the footprint uh, and size of everything matters. So we have launched that. Um, now it's really a matter of two things happening, I think, where these devices truly become the source devices of HD content, which will happen over time. Uh, I don't think we're there yet. It's possible to do now, but I don't think we're there yet, where mainstream certainly we're not. And then the second thing, there are a host of other, other let's say, um, requirements that are going to be need, that we'll need to address to make it really good for the mobile user. Now I can't comment on what we're addressing when, but let's just say that there are things that the mobile user requires that other applications don't need, uh, maybe charging or power, for example, we certainly low power to operate, all those things that are, uh, that are, that are very mobile-centric, we'll, we'll need to look at those. So for, for uh, viewers or, of MTBS and people reading the technology news, would you agree that the spec to look out for at CES this year is you know, whether they support 300 megahertz, is it three megahertz or gigahertz? 300 megahertz, which is, which is essentially four channels, so times four is what you get the, the, the total of, of uh, you know, almost 12 gigabits, 10 gigabits per second, so and 300 that, megahertz. And that will play a very important role in, in shaping the 3D experience that they'll be able to enjoy with that television. So, you, you mentioned the gaming world, wanting 1080p, 60, 3D bandwidth, the CE world's moving to 4K, which is exactly the same amount of bandwidth. So in, in, in all aspects, I think we're going to start seeing devices that require that level of bandwidth. Excellent. Well, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what we have in store for 2013, but I think 2012 is going to pack quite, quite the wallop to equalize console and PC gaming at, 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 at least. I agree. I agree. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us, Steve. We've been talking to Steve Venuti, president of HDMI licensing at CES Unveiled 2012. Of course, we'll be back with more from CES. Keep watching.